So to get our application running, there's a couple of things we have to do. First, make sure that you have Postgres running on the background if you use the Postgres database. If not, and you're using the standard SQLite like I'm using right now, you don't have to do anything. But we first have to create our database and then create the schema file. So we have to run two commands here in the terminal. First is rake db colon create colon all. And this is going to uh, create our database. And then after this, I'm going to do rake db migrate, which is going to be what creates our uh, schema file, which is required. So I'm going to do rake db migrate. And this is going to give us our schema file, get everything up and running. Now, all I have to do is start up the Rails server. And we do that by either typing in Rails server or I always do just Rails S and the S is a shortcut for server. So if I hit return now, this should be all we need and we should be able to have our application up and running. So it looks like that's all working. So uh, to read what this is saying, because I think it's important, especially if you're starting off to have an idea of what all this means. Uh, this is terminal console output right here. It's saying that it's booting Webrick. Webrick is the type of server we're using here. Webrick is really slow. It's typically only used in development. And uh, later on, we'll walk through how to use a different server. Uh, it's showing that we're using Rails 2.3 and we're starting on this URL. So this is what we're going to go to into in the browser. And then if you want other startup options, it also shows that here. You can do Rails server dash H, which is uh, short for help. And you can see all the different options. Uh, usually there aren't too many different options that I would use here. The one that I do use sometimes is dash P for port, and that way I can uh, designate a different type of port. So if you're running multiple applications at the same time, so say you have one that's your API and one that's your front end, then you'd want to be able to run them uh, on different ports. That's the only way it could work. But for right now, you don't have to worry about it. We can use the default one. And then it also shows Control C type in control C to shut down the server. And the fact that it shows the last call here is a start, that means it's all working. So I'm gonna switch over into the browser, type in localhost 3000, and it'll bring up the default page and it says welcome aboard. The fact you're seeing this means everything is working and the application is running as it should. Now, there's uh, uh, when we wrote, uh, when we ran those uh, database creation and migration files, that did some pretty cool stuff. So in the next video, I want to show you you can do a lot more than that. Uh, not when you first create the application, but uh, there's a full set of rake database commands, and that's what we're going to go into next.